Brook family. Brooke Babb here. Uh, today I'm going to read something I wrote uh, about my four years of high school and what I learned. One of the many things I learned. And I hope you enjoy. Ever since I was little, I always wanted to be unseen. I know. That seems odd since everyone seems to want to be famous and have their name called out in front of the whole world. But not me. Even as a young child, I didn't want to be famous. I kind of just wanted to float along with the crowd, not being invisible, but not being seen either. <laughs> Maybe this was because I was a very shy child and barely spoke in school compared to my very confident brother, but it turns out that wasn't really all of it. I never wanted to be invisible, but that's exactly what happened. I felt so unseen and see-through. By the time I got to middle school, it was far worse. This was where popularity started and friend groups formed. It was like I didn't exist. And although I told myself that I did this to myself and that I wasn't bothered by being completely and utterly invisible, I was only fooling myself. I began telling myself that I didn't need anyone else and that I was fine. During this time, I became extremely close with God and it was because of this that for the first time, I really felt that I became a Christian and found myself in Christ. That was the only good thing. <laughs> By the time I got to high school, I had no friends and truly felt like a nobody. This shouldn't bother me, of course, though, because I mean, I never wanted to be known or seen anyway, right? That's what I told myself. In Ecclesiastes 4, 7 through 12, it says, Two are better than one, because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. This verse powerfully explains how God never intended us to be alone. He wants us as brothers and sisters of Christ to join together and be there for each other. Not only does God want that, but I came to the realization freshman year that I should be spreading God's light and that I should be a light for God. I then started spreading the love of God on my social medias and along the way I made a friend, my first real friend. I was still invisible to most of the school and got bullied for posting stuff about God, but I was spreading my Savior's love and light for all to see, so it didn't matter, right? I tried to tell myself that. I soon found myself still wanting something more. Galatians 1.10 says, For am I now seeking the approval of man or of God, or am I trying to please man? Those questions are powerful. I knew exactly what I wanted because it was something I had never gotten before approval from man. I wanted to be known. I didn't want to be invisible. I wanted to be popular, if you will. What I didn't understand was that what it took to be popular wasn't at all what I wanted. So, starting sophomore year, I began dating and making more friends, trying to fit in, and for once in my life, be seen. I started branching away from my faith some because as the Bible says, Fitting in with the world is moving away from God. My life completely changed that summer after ending sophomore year with an incredibly nasty breakup. I started junior year with numerous rumors about me and everyone hating me for it. I finally realized why I never wanted to be seen or known when I was young. I didn't want to be known for something bad. That, however, is exactly what happened. This is one of the lowest times of my life, but there are always rainbows after rain. My focus of being what the world wanted me to be dragged me down to my lowest times, but also taught me more than I could have imagined. I began again. I started being who I am and showing people that I am not the rumors being told about me. I am not the lies and I am not what this world wants me to be. For I am myself 
and I will continue to be a light to others in darkness. People soon came to realize the rumors were nothing more than evil lies. And although not everyone saw me for who I really was, it didn't matter to me because I had a new purpose, showing others they are so beyond loved through Jesus. I knew what it was like to not feel loved, to not feel worthy of anything, to be alone. And that's when my new goal of showing others they're loved and that they're important and that they're needed in this world came from. And I still do that to this day. Because it's one of the things that many young people don't understand or know. In my last year of high school, I had made the best friends I've ever had. I gained confidence and I finally loved myself. Looking back on high school, I wouldn't change a thing. Yes, there was pain and loss, but without that, I have no idea who I would be right now. I am who I am because of the darkness I endured. If there's one thing I want to tell you or the youth for that matter, <laughs> It is that if you are lost, you can always be found. It is never too late to come back. It is never too late to run into God's arms. If you are lost, you can always be found. Thank you. verse that got me through high school um, would have to be my baptism verse because it is just really meaningful to me. I mean, I picked it out when I got baptized in 2014. Um, my verse is Psalm 121 verses 5 through 8. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is the shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. This um, Bible verse really means a lot because it's like, Telling me that God is always watching me and he'll keep me from things that I shouldn't be doing. He'll keep bad people out of my life, hopefully. And he'll always be watching over me. Um, it just helps in school because you just... When you think you're failing or you have a... Uh, there's just bad positivity in the school that day or something goes wrong or there's a fight in school or something, you know, he's he's going to keep you away from it. He, you won't be involved in it and you won't get in trouble. And I mean, it's, and he's going to watch you while you're sleeping, make sure you're okay, You'll always be safe. I mean, he's always there to keep you safe, so it's very meaningful. I mean, my verse can also help you with anything, like going through like one of my medical conditions, and he just has been keeping me alive, keeping me healthy through all the troubles when I've been in, the, in and out of the hospital since I had my first seizure in eighth grade. There was a time when I was homeschooled and especially this past year, my senior year, which was not as stressful as you think it was. I think my junior year 
was a little more stressful because, you know, you're trying to get all those credits in before you graduate. This year was pretty easy. I only had two academic classes. So, but he helped me and he, I got through it and I got out with all A's and one B. So, but yeah. I love you guys and I hope you're staying safe in the quarantine. And I cannot wait to see you. And I can't wait to give Mr. Bill Pierce a big old hug. Much love.